Hey everybody, how's life? So this one is the next in Sam Harris reading list. There are 186 books, 186 books, as I said before. This is on Goodreads, and I'm reading all of them. I think we've done two, two so far, and this is the third one. This one is Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. So I actually listened to this one. I had it on an audiobook because I just I didn't have much time, so I just listened on the commute so I could get it down that way. It was difficult to take notes that way. But I listened to it twice, and I, you know, I had to look up some quotes, so I just picked some quotes that I could find. I, I wrote some down as I was going along uh, when I had the ability to, but... But I, I tried to pull some quotes that, that I liked that I think reflected what the what the book was about. And Marcus Aurelius, this one, it was written in around 160 to 180 CE. So what I could under, from what I understand, he didn't expect this to become a book. It was just, you know, writings that, that were found and uh, then turned into a book. And so this was a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Uh... <laughs> But most of what he talks about, he goes through just things that he's learned throughout his life. And just to, just to give you some kind of idea. And this is a really, it's a short book. It's actually, it's one of those things that you just pick up anytime and, and have a look at it and, and get something out of it. I read, uh, there's one article, I wanted to read a little bit about it, but I, I got, there's an article about this guy was saying how he read it more than a hundred times over 10 years. And then he was giving like his assessment of it at this point and, and how it, helped him dramatically through his life, through marriages, through all all sorts of stuff. But I could I could certainly see that this book has a lot of uh like advanced thinking for <laughs> for the time and and the thing you notice the most is that it seems because I guess because he he didn't expect to publish it it seems really sincere like it's just he's trying to be as open about what reality is and and what he thinks and all that sort of stuff as as he can as opposed to the posturing and, and advertisement that is you know most autobiographies or uh, most writings just in general so uh early chapters like chapter one he talks about from whom i learned so he goes through like a list of virtues of things that he learned from different people in his life with which i think is a fantastic <laughs> practice, you know, it'd be great if more people did that to see, you know, what value they've received. Not that, you know, discrete value is necessarily what people should be thinking about when they talk about people around them. But going through and saying, these are the things that I learned from this person. This person brought me this kind of a thing that has helped me throughout my life that I think is a, is a valuable lesson to have. So subsequent to that, he, he talks about things like, I think this is like chapter six or something. He talks about how you should know your own mind. That's an important concept, and he goes. He talks more about that, but it's something that, that self knowledge. Obviously, uh, obviously, he has you know a precursor in, in Socrates in the an unexamined life is not worth living. It's much the same sentiment, but he he kind of talks about that you should really know your own mind and how your own mind works. He talks about the empty vapor of fame. That's a quote. I like that. And another one, take away the complaint. I have been harmed and the harm is taken away. Uh, these are very advanced ways of thinking that, you know, you wish and you would think that more people would be able to take these things on board, especially nowadays. Oh my God, especially nowadays. But this, these are the kinds of things that he talks about. Uh, he goes, he talks about the gods at one point, uh, but he seems, I mean, as I'm sure most of the brightest people in history you know he's relatively agnostic or atheistic and or atheistic when it comes to the gods in general he says he's not dissatisfied dissatisfied uh, that he only gets to live so many years he asks you know why anybody would want to do harm um, he talks about how if you come upon somebody who is bad is doing something bad or has bad ideas or is causing harm or whatever you ask what idea of good or evil has brought him to do the wrong uh, you know so it's it's this <laughs> deterministic idea that would be born out of course later when it comes to evolution and, and psychology and all that sort of stuff though uh, as Paul Bloom has stated, uh, psychology is really pre-Copernican still. You know, we haven't really reached that that level yet. Uh, he talks about it in terms of, okay, well, what is the what is the real cause of of this person doing wrong and doing harm or engaging in evil? What idea of good or evil? So it's kind of a, a coinage of the meme, <laughs> the meme idea that there's some idea that came from somewhere that got insinuated in this person, and and that's what's causing it. He also attacks free will to some degree. Um, which goes hand in hand with what I was just talking about. He says that everything is opinion, which is a, a good concept. 
and uh, eventually gets to kind of a the idea okay if you have a problem you should be looking at yourself you know rather than flailing at the world you should be looking at at yourself and how you can impact this problem based on yourself so it's it's a lot of you know it's like a early <laughs> first second century second century self help book but it's it's got a lot of that for me it, i don't know it's a little sad it's a little sad that this kind of wisdom has been floating around for this much time and uh, to be i i feel like marcus aurelius has a lot more to teach than like jesus who came around <laughs> before the you know if that's i'm i think i'm going to talk about this later but that's if jesus even existed this is actually a, a fascinating topic but Whatever the case, just granting Jesus an existence, uh, I think there's much more wisdom to be had in this than anything in the New Testament. Uh, the New Te- I mean, he mostly just cribs in the New Testament from the Old Testament anyway, uh, which cribs from uh, much older sources. But anyway, the, like Marcus Aurelius in his meditations, that that was just a fix, the meditations. Uh, there was actually no title to this book. That's that's what they gave it to. Um, there have been numerous translations. I don't know what translations I, a translation I've read. Anyway, there's, there's a lot of wisdom in this, and this is something that I could certainly see myself just, you know, like I said, it's short, so I could see myself just listening to it, or picking up and reading it on, you know, a vacation or on a beach or on whatever. Just every now and then, just to remind myself of the kind of wisdom that existed back then. And like I said, it's sad because it's like a lot of this stuff was figured out at the time, you know? A lot of this stuff was figured out 2,000 years ago and people haven't haven't done it yet. It's, it's, it's a wonder. It's crazy. It's, I don't know, there are different ways to put it nowadays, but, and kind of more vital ways that attack our <laughs> our any inner biologically driven sense of, you know, self and importance and all that stuff. But these are important ideas, you know, when it comes to attacking free will, when it comes to looking at the source of, of an evil, if somebody's engaging in it, when it comes to realizing that you're the problem, that <laughs> if you take away the complaint, I have been harmed, then there's no harm, you know, all those ideas. And now it, it, it feels like it's going completely the other direction, that it's not a matter of those ideas, that every person is an island and every person's subjectivity is the, the center of the universe and, and your free will completely unexplained uh, and unexamined is what's important. It's shocking and ridiculous and I just uh, I, I can't believe that these ideas have been floating around for so long and yet people today can be so vacuous. But who knows? Who knows? If we did a, a full survey of the ideas that people have, maybe you know there's a fringe group that is the most vocal, that part of their culture is they're the most vocal <laughs> and that's the reason that all these ideas are getting advertised so much. But the reality is the vast majority, the center of the bell curve is just, they take a lot of these ideas to heart and realize that they don't function, they still function, while being skeptical of their own ideas and motivations and and thinking that it's my choice whether I'm going to let this harm me or not, you know, not when it comes to an uppercut or something like that, but... Yeah, when it comes to the psychological damage, there's there's a precursor and there's a choice on how you respond to it or or whatever else. Like I said, the the biggest takeaway from this are are the advanced ideas that come out of this, the self reflection, the fault in ourselves, the attacks on free will, and just the sincerity. You know, the if somebody knows it's going to be published, you know, they they have a lot of trouble being sincere. So maybe that was the thing. But but the sincerity in it is just that I'm trying to say the things that I really think, as opposed to packaged and processed and all that stuff uh, for a consuming public. So I've got a couple of quotes I just want to go through that that I pulled. Like I said, I listened to it. So Quote, when you wake up in the morning, tell yourself the people I deal with today will be meddling, ungrateful, arrogant, dishonest, jealous, and surly. They are like this because they can't tell good from evil. But I have seen the beauty of good and the ugliness of evil and have recognized that the wrongdoer has a nature related to my own, not of the same blood and birth, not the same mind, and possessing a share of the divine. And so none of them can hurt me. No one can implicate me in ugliness, nor can I feel angry at my relative or hate him. We were born to work together like feet, hands, and eyes, like the two rows of teeth upper and lower to obstruct each other is unnatural to feel anger at someone to turn your back on him these are unnatural fantastic quote i don't know if it's borne out by biology and and evolutionary biology and evolutionary psychology but it's a fantastic quote and an excellent sentiment and it doesn't come with all the all the excess baggage that you know a lot of religious traditions do and it's more important and vital than a lot of religious traditions Quote, everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. 
end quote. So that's obviously an important thing I try to get across, but not even so much as that. uh, Because I don't, here's the thing, I don't want just people to be incapable or reject any conclusions uh, because they have to be mindful and aware of their limitations. Like, we still have to draw conclusions. We still have to take actions based on very limited information. That's something we still have to do. It's just that if you're <laughs> standing over a, you know, a 15-year-old girl who's about to be sacrificed so you can bury her in the foundation of your building, then uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, maybe uh, question this a little bit. Maybe wonder whether this is actually a good idea. And wonder how you came to this conclusion. And wonder what, how many things are involved with the thing that you're trying to accomplish. How many propositions you have to accept to be able to say that this is a true thing that you should be doing. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, another quote. Quote, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. End quote. Very good point, especially when it comes to just how are you going to function. You can't control all those things out there. You can control yourself. If you can be protean, if you can adapt yourself to the things that are going on, then you're going to be able to function much better than if you're just saying that the world is thus and there's very little I can do about it or nothing I can do about it, so I'm just going to wallow, which is kind of the the posture of a a lot of the social justice stuff now, is that the world is a certain way. We We don't even define it, really. We just say, this is the world and I'm outraged and that's just the way it is done. That's the end of the conversation. When, of course, in reality, so much of this is likely fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, and uh, it's something that needs to be addressed. So much of this flailing is likely just insecurity writ large. Whatever the case, quote, reject your sense of injury and the injury itself disappears, end quote. Same sentiment. sentiment. Quote, whenever you are about to find fault with someone, ask yourself the following question. What fault of mine most nearly resembles the one I am about to criticize, end quote. So good stuff. It's, I would, I would recommend, you know, I didn't recommend reading a couple of the other ones because I thought they were rudimentary related to the Dawkins stuff, which I, when this, when it first came out, it was a big deal. I hadn't even met another atheist by the time <laughs> this this stuff came out. I couldn't remember having ever met an, another atheist. And and now it's it's you know a large chunk of the population, I don't not a huge chunk, calls themselves atheist, but at least not religious. A lot of them do. Even though if you don't have a belief no, I'm not gonna get into that right now. But the point is uh, like I didn't really recommend reading the other ones. I I recommended, you know, just you could pick up the ideas from them. You can read synopses or listen to podcasts about those books, but you don't necessarily have to read them. This one is an excellent little kind of a, <laughs> a civilizational pep talk. That's that's what it felt like. It's like it, it talks to you individually, but it, it really is, it contains a lot of the nascent ideas that are necessary for us to keep going. So I, that sounds gra- grandiose as hell, but uh, just give me a little latitude <laughs> in talking about it. And I appreciate it, and I hope all is well, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.